Hey everybody, welcome to Movie Time, I'm Sean. In an interview with Empire, Kevin Feige revealed some pretty interesting Marvel Cinematic Universe information this past week. First off, Feige announced that Thanos will be appearing in Guardians of the Galaxy. He also said that they do have an actor in mind, but they're not ready to announce the casting of this guy yet. To me, that's good news. It's really, really good news because they have this trilogy of Avengers movies, and in within each trilogy, within the trilogy of the Avengers movies, they have all these individual films that build up to each major Avengers film, and I think that this has to be done sooner before later because the longer they wait with this, the longer they keep putting it off, they, they keep not um, you know making their decision. They are getting closer to a deadline of uh, of you know just rushing a movie that you know that could be one of the biggest movies ever. Um, when you think about it, if they go with the Infinity Gauntlet storyline in Avengers three, I, I mean wow, it's going to be really big. It's going to be huge, and so I think. Um, I think they got to do this really soon, and I'm glad that they're um, getting really, really close that to this point where they can uh, finally say that they have an actor cast as Thanos. Also, in this interview, Feige said that Ant-Man, the movie Ant-Man, is plays a, a, a bigger part in the Marvel Cinematic Universe than we all thought. Ant-Man, the storyline goes back, you know, decades. It goes back to Hank Pym when he was younger. Michael Douglas is playing Hank Pym. It goes back to when he was younger. Then you have Scott Lang. I'm assuming they're using him for now um, in the present day. So this this Ant Man storyline it has been changed a little bit because there was a first a first copy of the script that has been changed slightly. But with the way that Edgar Wright wanted the movie to play out, they took that into consideration to help form the Marvel Cinematic U Universe. We just don't know it yet because they haven't put it on screen. But this is essentially what he's saying. He's saying that in the Ant-Man movie, it shows people, gives people the knowledge and the ability, he says, to kind of shape where we are today with the Avengers Age of Ultron movie. So it makes me wonder if Hank Pym did create Ultron back you know, 50 years ago, maybe with Howard Stark, maybe Tony Stark's father, and then maybe Tony is going to create the Vision. Uh, all kinds of things go through my head. There's lots of possibilities, but Ant-Man movie is going to be pretty, pretty big in this world, which makes me wonder why Ant-Man is going to be coming out after the Avengers Age of Ultron. So that makes me wonder about that. I, I, I really would rather, if, if it plays that big a part, I would like to see it before the Avengers Age of Ultron and see how it carries over into Avengers Age of Ultron. The fact is that right now they're, they're, the Ant-Man movie is, is dated after the Avengers movie and so that leads me to believe that it happens after Avengers Age of Ultron. So hopefully the way this is all being planned and plays out, it turns out to be great. I'm really excited about the news from this interview with uh, Empire Magazine. So this past week at WonderCon, Quentin Tarantino, he had a reading of The Hateful Eight. This is the only time that the Hateful Eight original ending is going to be ever like heard ever. There were tickets sold to this event. They were pretty expensive, from what I've heard. And um, the, he had a bunch of his like best friend actors that he always has in his movies: Samuel L. Jackson, Michael Madsen, a bunch of those actors that were in a lot of his movies. He had them sit down and they did a table reading of this. This is pretty awesome. I'm glad that he's turning this. You know, he's turning his opinion about everything that happened around. He is going to be putting this film into production. He's rewriting the script. He's going to be coming up with a new ending. So this is the only time that people can hear the original ending. I hope uh, in the future possibly there's some way that we can you know see video of this table reading or, or possibly have a printout of this script to see what the differences are. Again, I'm glad that he's gonna actually make this movie. I'm hoping that it's gonna be a good one. Alright guys, and some of the biggest news of the week, Netflix has announced that they are gonna be raising their streaming prices uh, from one to two dollars in the next few months. They haven't specified what the actual price is and when they're gonna actually do it, but they said within the next few months they will be raising the prices. Now, before you go and get all crazy on Netflix like I want to, like, ah, why are you doing this? <laughs> Netflix says that if you are a current subscriber, you'll be able to hang on to your uh, rate for a generous time. That's what they say, a generous time. This is pretty big news because back a few years ago, I think it was 2011, they actually proposed splitting up their their streaming from their DVDs and actually were almost on the verge of canceling the DVD Blu-rays 
por uh, portion of their uh, business. So this is one more step that they're they're taking. I don't know. Maybe it's just a price raise, and I, I really hope that's all it is because I don't want them to stop, you know, sending out DVDs and Blu-rays because that's how I like to get my stuff. Um, I definitely do streaming all the time as well, but uh, I need both options because I like to get some of the newer stuff when I want it, and sometimes there isn't stuff. There's that's really old isn't always on the streaming so um, they are raising the price on that no word if they're raising the price or separating the two options and uh, if you are a current subscriber you're going to be able to keep your price so that's good news for now and and hopefully this is, goes really smoothly and hopefully it's not too much of a jarring effect on my subscription to Netflix alright guys in theaters this week we have two movies that caught my attention we have The Other Woman starring uh, Cameron Diaz Leslie Mann and the wonderful Kate Upton I'm not really interested in seeing this movie except for um, just to see the ladies that Kate Upton is making her film debut hopefully she doesn't have too many lines in it um, hopefully she's just used as uh, eye candy in the film and Cameron Diaz uh, this one looks like a role where she can dig her nails into be a little uh, vulgar being that side chick of of Leslie Mann being the wife you know being the side chick of Leslie Mann's husband I think that she could dig her nails into this one and really um, go with it and Leslie Mann I mean she's pretty much she's funny in everything she does I really like her as a talent and so uh, I'm not gonna be seeing this one uh, in the theater but it does catch my attention because of the women that are in it so I'm looking forward to this one to it when it hits blu-ray the second film is the last movie that Paul Walker was able to completely finish is Brick Mansions uh, this one looks interesting. I'm very interested in this one may, uh, for two reasons mainly. Uh, one, because it is Paul Walker's last film. Um, and two, because I love the parkour element and the, 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 the choreography. It's all A lot of it looks like it's hand-to-hand -hand combat in here. I like that. I like to see some of that kind of action instead of always just gun, shoot, bang, bang, bang. I like the running around. David, I think his name is David Bell in there. He's uh, I want to say he's a parkour guy. But um, he's going around in there just jumping, flipping, turning, uh, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. I'm really interested in seeing what this says like. The only uh, downside of this movie that I can think of is Ruzza playing the uh, the villain. Um, he, they, people, A lot of people give him a lot of props because they say he has a very, very creative mind and he comes up with very good ideas. And I'm not going to be one to doubt that or say otherwise, but his acting is it's really corny. <laughs> I'm not an actor. I'm not saying I could be better than him at all. But he's a, he's not that great an actor. So that is the one downside to this movie. But I am interested in seeing this. Hopefully I could see it sometime in the next week or so. Alright guys, time for movie of the week. This week's movie was G.I. Joe Retaliation. Now to start off, uh, I did see the first G.I. Joe. That was a few years back when it came out. And to be honest with you, I don't remember much from it. The only thing I remember is uh, Marlon Wayans and Channing Tatum running around with these... Uh, you know, crisis bio nanotech suits and making you know, them be able to run faster and jump farther and things like that. That's the only thing I remember from the first film. Oh, and that Joseph Gordon Levitt was in it as the villain, but that's about it. Yeah, that's about it. So, this one to me is almost like if you know tidbits from the first movie, you don't even have to remember the whole first movie, you just got to know how it ends, I guess you could say, because you got to know who is where and who's what. But if you know those little tidbits, you could start off with this film and go right into it. To me, this film feels like what a like a like a GI Joe TV show could be, but on a longer scale, like a larger scale, like more explosions and things like that. Because at the end of the film, with everything happening, I felt like, oh, cool, this could be like if there's another episode, I'd watch the other, another episode because I like to see like it has that like that Saturday morning cartoon type feel to it where I want to see the next episode because it carries over. Uh, yeah, there's the bad guy getting away in the nick of time, but we're going to catch him, But we and we foiled his plan, but we're going to get him. It kind of has that feeling to it. The movie stars The Rock, uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. You have Adrian Palicki from uh, Friday Night Lights fame and uh, possible Wonder Woman uh, TV show that never made it onto TV. Um... And then you have a few other people. You have Ray Park as uh, Snake Eyes. The Shadowstorm guy, Byung Lee, um, he's pretty badass. He needs to be in a lot of movies, kicking some major ass. He's pretty badass. Ray Park is always one of my favorite dudes, so when they fight, it's pretty awesome. Um, so, yeah, so you got some name actors in there that can bring the crowd in. Uh, the explosions are big. The acting is uh, mediocre. It's nothing to brag uh, to mom about. It's it's a, it's basically what you expect it to be. It's nothing 
crazy out there. It's a movie you can just watch and just kind of let go and enjoy the action. At the same time, though, with this film, there it is an army film. It's a military film. So, in in my mind, I want you know that you can't get away with them not shooting some bad guys and killing people. But at the same time, you can definitely see that this movie is aimed for the lower age groups because uh, you really don't see blood in here. Uh, you really don't see anybody die. I mean, you could see a body that's just lying there still, but you never see the impact of them dying. Uh, and so to me, it seems like it's very much aimed for a very young audience. So if you have kids, this movie would be great for them. I'm sure that this would get, you know, a 10 to a 12 year old or less, uh, get their mind going and super excited and very happy about this movie. Uh, me, on the other hand, I was able to let go and watch it and enjoy it, but it's not something I would ever buy. It's not something I want to be watching multiple, multiple times. I have seen this movie twice and I, I think I'm probably going to go another year or two before I ever see it again. So it's, it's a nice movie to let loose and just kind of relax to. I'll give it that. And, you know, it's on uh, Netflix right now. You could stream it. I think they just added it to streaming. And so there you go. You go over there on Friday night, Saturday night, whatever you want to do. Just relax, watch the movie, have a good time, eat some pizza, throw back some pop. You know, how, you know, just enjoy the movie. Take it for what it is. Don't overanalyze it. Just have a good time with it. That all right, guys, that's it for movie time this week. Remember to click the like, share, subscribe button down below. Leave your comments, questions, inquiries in the comment section down below. Let's have a great conversation this week. We'll see you next time.